All right, and welcome to Fast Break Breakfast NBA Podcast. My name is Keith Parrish, and I'm here once again with my buddy through the miracle of computer phone. I'm here with Dave DeFore. Dave, the Olympics are over. It's time to cancel your peacock. How are you doing? Actually, uh, I got a friend that works <laughs> for a company that hooks them up with Peacock. So uh, oh, there you go. Yes, no canceling Peacock for you. Login. Although, am I supposed to hang on uh, for the NFL? There's like Peacock games on the NFL. I don't even know what the NBA situation is as far as streaming NBA games. It's Maybe going I, to be on Peacock. Yeah, in some are going to be on so. Peacock. What is League Pass going to cover? League Pass is not going to hit the, what is it, Peacock Tuesdays? I haven't, I haven't I seen know. the breakdown. I haven't dug into it yet. There's a day by day. I am so, I don't, I know we, we complain a lot from this position of like old guys. We're just like, why is this different? Yeah. But is it not daunting to young people when a sports league releases a seven day schedule that's like, hey, here are the four streaming services you need. We're going to have NBC Mondays. We're going to have Amazon Tuesdays. We're going to have ESPN Wednesdays. We're going to have Peacock Thursdays. We're going to have Amazon Friday. It's like, who can follow this? I don't. I think that younger people have just been microtransaction to the point where it doesn't affect their brains anymore. Yeah. You know, it's sort of like the Olympics, right? I mean, we again, we just finished the Olympics. My biggest complaint about the Olympics, too much Olympics. But you're wrong because it was a overwhelming success for NBC. A slam dunk. It isn't always a huge slam dunk for these these corporations, for these networks, but like they decided to air everything live and then also air it again in prime time, which is it seems smart to me. Like if it's on, you can't hide results anymore. So just show show all the events. And they showed all the events. And now I assume for LA 2028 or the next winter Olympics, they're going to keep these same adjustments. Everything's going to be streaming. It's going to be live. You're going to be able to find it. They're going to broadcast it directly to your neural link implant. I will say, Dave, did you watch, uh, I know this is maybe not your thing, but did you watch any of the closing ceremony? Did you see any of the highlights? No. Okay. So they, they, there's all, there's a little, obviously there's a lot of pomp and circumstance and it's fun. And there's like youth choirs singing and orchestras and f- drones and fireworks, all of that. What spectacle. It's great. Sure. The opening ceremonies were super fun. Like the closing ceremonies th- had a Tom Cruise moment though. Oh, did okay. you see the Tom so Cruise I, moment? No, no, I didn't see it, but I yeah. saw some, you know, I'm big Tom Cruise guy. Tom yeah. Cruise is a movie star. He makes big movie star. Big movies, and I like that. Um, I love the Mission Impossible movies. I love that he sells me a movie with a stunt. Yeah. A- and he just shows me this stunt and the making of it for a year. And then when I see it in the movie, it's like, oh, God, this is in the first three minutes. What? And yeah. I- I'm sold. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so I'm super into that. But Tom Cruise is not an Olympian, not an athlete. Mm. Okay. Um, I, I do not, th- this is the most over the top celebrity just pushed down my throat Olympics of my life. And it's only going to be worse in 2028 because everything is only about fame. And so like Snoop was making half a million dollars a day. I man, like for what it's okay. You got some photo <laughs> for being ops, likable. Like, get, get magic Johnson. He's an Olympian. Everybody right. knows him. Yeah. Do you you feel you felt like the threshold? Because uh, I asked my wife the same question. But this is where Dave, we need a third host here who's more plugged into pop culture things and finds more okay, joy but, in pop culture things. Because neither you or I do. It's just yeah. not our thing. Snoop Snoop hasn't done an Iron Cross. He's never done a balance <laughs> beam routine. He's never been on a, a played water polo, never done any of these things. And like, I like, like, I love, like, it's a great story that Snoop went from this guy that, you know, Tipper Gore was, you know, uh, fighting a battle against to America's uncle grandpa. You know what I mean? But like, that's the question I asked Sean Keen. That's the question I asked my wife. I was like, I was like, is it not weird that Snoop is the American mainstream television emissary 
for America? And she's like, why? I'm like, well, I didn't think he was that beloved up and down just the whole cross section of America. I thought it was a smaller niche. Like, I know he's wildly successful. Martha Stewart, man. Martha Stewart, mainstream Snoop. Right. But it, even then I was like, I, I was just like, I don't know. But it it was all a success. But congrats to Snoop, whoever. Yeah, but congrats the, to Snoop. The, the Tom Cruise thing. So he did a stunt in the stadium, which was cool. He repelled all the way down. He shook everybody's hand. He was wearing his costume for the pre-film thing as they transfer the Olympic flag from Paris to Los Angeles. Then when they went to the pre-film thing, like they showed him skydiving, which is cool. You and me like it. Cool yeah. stunt. But then after that, I was so disappointed. I hope I don't know anyone who worked on this on the creative side. I was so disappointed how it turned into the most run of the mill, like cell phone commercial. It was just like a pack of people running down the street. Like, Hey, we're going to the Olympics. I've got the Olympic flag. And it was just like this pack of 20 people running. And I was like this with all the creatives in Hollywood and across our nation, this is the most artistic package we put together. It was like, hear me out. What if, Tom Cruise is running with the flag and a lot of people just join him. And then we get this big group of people running towards the, the beach. And it was like, it was not much. And then it culminated in a live, it switched over from, from the tape thing and it, and it went back into like a live performance and it was the red hot chili peppers. Oh yeah. And, and it was the ancient decrepit red hot chili peppers. It was, I would say, Far more disturbing than anything in the opening ceremonies. It, Keith, this was a controversial flea concert. Too. Flopping around a shirtless flea with a uh, was it some kind of sarong? I don't know what this his skirt thing, but it was like it was gaping open. He's wearing like a black black underwear, and it was just like that's an ancient man. And these people look unwell. It looked like a post apocalyptic Mad Max level performance. Where I was like, this is yikes controversial performance what was the controversy i well, didn't even they see said it was in venice keith yeah but it wasn't it was at rosie's dog beach in long beach like a, a mile away from my house that's that's not the beach it was venice. that's that's not where uh uh woody harrelson and wesley snipes meet in and whiteman can't jump no okay but it no. was pretending to be that or something yeah oh okay yeah they dressed it up i mean listen i mean it's beautiful out here yeah, they're gonna play handball right down the road. Hopefully, I'll be running U.S. Olympic handball by then. I look forward to your involvement in uh, LA 2028 Olympics. How do you feel, Dave, about breaking being removed from the Olympics? <laughs> Why it's was it in the Olympics? <laughs> it's already gone. <laughs> Listen, uh, the fact that this lady just made fun of it. Um, I, I guess Did I don't she? know what she was doing. I have no. Listen, man, I don't. I haven't to know. dug into it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I haven't dug into it at all. It sounds I've only like seen she has some the photos? So, sociology d degree. She's a PhD. I guess, in like man. Cultural expression. And then she colonized this event and then got it canceled. <laughs> it was out. Now, hold on. It was going to be canceled anyway. They do showcase stuff all the time, right? Okay. Like, this is not, it's nothing new here. Like, skateboarding. Yeah. It won't be back. Uh, they've over. done skateboarding before, right? I, not like this. I actually, for me, there's I no don't, I don't, way they get rid of skateboarding before the Los Angeles Olympics. I don't know. I mean, they got rid of baseball. You know, um, baseball was a showcase game. It, it's, um, I, I don't know. I, I, I think that uh, I would rather have sports in the Olympics. I, I know that's a hot take, Keith, but uh, too, give me too, something that's, that's, that's too spicy you do for, for me. time. Something where you got to beat someone one on one, or you maybe have yep. a team and the objective is to score more points than the other team. Just something um, not subjective. Yeah. I just if there are judges involved. Well, I mean, it's not for me, I I don't know if boxing you, is as close I don't know as how, I can come. I don't know how closely you watch the bronze medal basketball game between Serbia and Germany. I feel like there might have been a lot of subjective judging going yeah, on. What, it was a very to be fair. I was cheering for Serbia. It was a very friendly whistle for Serbia. It was a overwhelmingly friendly whistle 
Um, did you did you did you expect the Germans to get a good whistle in, in Paris? <laughs> I don't know. It was not maybe the most balanced thing I ever saw. Um, let's get into more of the basketball. Of course, we need to talk about the gold medal game from the U.S. and then we'll try to, I guess, stretch that into a full episode. Before we do, <laughs> Dave, uh, let's talk about our breakfast. What breakfast have you had? Oh man, um, so I, I was out of town this weekend. Um, it was my girlfriend's birthday, so we went up to uh like santa barbara wine country and hung out and had a good weekend so um i always under eat when i'm on trips because because you want to get drunk on wine what do you well yeah and also i'm doing stuff (laughs) yeah um you know you're just outside all day and and when i'm at home i track my food so i know oh okay i ate enough today um i'm not like a a huge i love food but i'm not Mm -hmm. i'm not a big eater and uh so i was starving this morning when i woke up and you know i did a little bit of a i don't know what i'm gonna call this but my some sort of take on an english breakfast i love my baked beans with my my eggs and toast but then adding a good serving of kimchi to that it just nice. re- it really is perfect yeah that sounds delicious yeah. it's um, and a protein very, shake you know? very hearty healthy breakfast oh yeah i um I'm gonna go chop some wood after this I had my typical uh, plain yogurt with the one tiny carrot and blueberries and raspberries and strawberries all blended together with some ice, just a nice fruit smoothie, a um, little on the sweet side. But I've stopped doing the vanilla flavored yogurt. I'm just going plain, you know, try to get less sugar, just mm-hmm. thinking a little bit about, you know, eating right a little bit. So um, Gotta that, do it. that was my breakfast for today. All right. After our breakfast, Dave, we move to our breakfast and bed apologies. This is my chance to make right what I might have gotten wrong in a previous episode. It's frequently the first time we talk about the NBA, not so much this time. Um, the apologies. All right, I'm not really going to apologize. Well, here's, here's what I got wrong. Um, our Patreon supporters in the Slack channel on the Fact Check Checked Fact Slack channel They pointed out some errors I made. I said last episode there were no AMC theaters in Nashville. I might have said near Nashville. I guess in or near, very crucial word. Um, A couple of people pointed out there were, in fact, a couple of AMC theaters near Nashville. There are two in the county proper. Um, Neither one of those are in Nashville. So I I don't... I haven't pedantic... I haven't checked the tape, but I'm sorry um, that there are some. I just remember when I came home from, when I moved back to Nashville after college, I had a a $3, I had $3 left on a gift card to an AMC theater and that thing withered and died. Nowhere I could use it. So there didn't used to be, now apparently there's one 15, 20 minutes away. Okay, that's my bad. Um, Also, Dave, in this fact check, check fact channel, I got a little feedback for the Patreon supporters. Oh, this is for objective facts that are incorrect. I, I'm not looking for feedback <laughs> there. You know, I'm not, I'm, I'm not looking for opinion feedback. Also, uh, Mike F was like, when I was talking about the, the Olympic diving team of cook and bacon. And I was like, that reminds me of our guy, our, our guy, Dwayne Bacon and Daycon cook. Mike says, did you mean to say Quinn Cook when you said Daquan Cook? No, Mike. I meant Daquan, Daquan. Cook, the NBA basketball player. <laughs> fact check, check fact is for factual errors. I know what I said. He's like, you named a more obscure NBA player. That's right, I did. Anyways. Uh, the, the AMC theater thing made, made me think of a note I made this weekend. Yeah, you know, cuz we're we're turning quickly into middle-aged men who complain about the price of things, which I There's nothing to talk the NBA has done nothing right. for a month. There's I been saw, no transactions. On this trip, yeah. I saw multiple billboards for McDonald's. Okay? Yeah. And you know, they've they've Heard done the thing where they said, "Hey, uh we did not meet projections for sales." So that they, even though they sold you know, billions of dollars worth of stuff. That means they actually secretly lost money because money's fake, but they just dropped the prices. Like legitimately just went and dropped the prices. They're advertising like a, it's a fish filet with nuggets, fries, and a drink for $5. Is this going to fix the American economy? Yeah. Like is is McDonald's strong enough 
to strong arm everyone else where the prices have just run away into into solving this problem for us can we get movies back to a reasonable price because of mcdonald's i think i don't i think the movies they have to all collapse first you see like netflix is building movie theaters yeah it's like Amazon Prime is building movie theaters. I think the whole thing has to collapse first. I don't know about the fast food industry. Um, did you see that uh, McDonald's in France, the France McDonald's, they got rid of curry sauce? <laughs> Isn't that great? Steph they should have just, just made it spicier. This devil curry is killing Amazing. us, is hurting us. If you haven't heard the, the the French call, I assume that was translated correctly. I don't know. The video uh, has been deleted enough. from Twitter due to copyright claims, I believe. But the uh, the French announcers allegedly said, if the subtitles were correct, this devil curry is hurting us. <laughs> Which honestly, it was a magical moment. Let's talk about it um, right after this short break. All right, Dave, this could be steak and eggs best thing. After I jumped off my patriotism um, wagon, I cheered for Serbia. I found myself cheering for Serbia in the semifinal game. I wanted Jokic to win. I really did. I decided I liked Jokic more than I liked all the NBA players involved on the U.S. side. So, all right, I am less of, of a good American citizen than most of you out there uh, who are cheering for America. But I'm not going to cheer for France. And <laughs> watching, watching the gold medal game, it was just unreal. It was a spectacular, magical performance from Steph Curry, who made his final four three-pointers over the final two and a half minutes. All of that occurring once France cut it to a three-point game. All of that occurring after Steph Curry uh, threw away his fifth pass. I didn't know if it was the thing where like he unlocked his powers. Like once he committed that fifth oh, turnover, that's how he's it like, works. Oh, now I'm ready to go. This is, you know, it's funny. Steph always makes the right play until he throws the ball directly to the other team. <laughs> yeah, but the yeah. reason that you live with that stuff and you, you live with some of the stuff where like he, he gets handsy on defense, right? Like he, he commits some of the dumbest, worst reach in fouls ever. It's because when he does, hit four threes to seal the game. You know, he's the only guy who can do it. He had 17 threes in the, in the medal rounds of the Olympics. I mean, that's just that's, absurd. Yeah. Absurd. He's playing, he's on the court at, at the end of that game with LeBron James and Kevin Durant. And those guys become bystanders and they watch him cook. I mean, that is, this is, we watched a guy be respected in a way that we rarely get to see as, as a basketball fans, but basketball players rarely respect other guys the way they do Steph Curry. He's, he's the American nightmare. For others, not for us. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Not for <laughs> us. He talking about KD and LeBron watching him. If you go back and watch his final four makes, which I have, and I assume most people have many times the last one, which is just preposterous. Um, maybe one of the best three pointers he's ever hit. I mean, when you consider circumstances, time of game, difficulty level on that, when both KD and, and LeBron were spaced out across the perimeter and like LeBron had his hands ready, kind of like, Hey man, you're double teamed. I'm ready. You know? And when the shot goes in, LeBron kind of puts his hands up. Like, what are you doing? And then he puts his hands up like I'm cheering. And then he puts both of his palms on his face, <laughs> on his cheeks. Like, oh, my goodness. I can't believe this. Like like a stunned, almost a shell-shocked moment. Uh, it, it was just, I mean, I use the term magical. It was great, too, because, like, you know, my kids are six and nine. And I try yeah. to get them involved in sports. And sometimes they're interested. My, my, uh, my six-year-old, well, my nine-year-old was calling me a traitor because I'm like, because during the, 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 the semifinal game, I was like, I think I'm cheering for Serbia. And they were like, what? Um, and my six-year-old was like, that Jokic is hurting our stars on purpose. That's what she said. <laughs> That's verbatim what she actually said. It wasn't a Ruth Conda thing. Um, it was, uh, she, she literally said that, and I was, I was delighted. But in this one, like, they weren't that interested. It was like Sunday afternoon. Yeah. Um, but I yelled down. I'm like, hey, France is within six or whatever. Like, gold medal, come downstairs. And Steph had just hit his two threes. 
And then they were downstairs watching with me. And he got the like the the open one where he yeah. pump fakes relocated. It was wide open top of the key, and I could just be like, and I could proudly tell my kids before he shot it, that's going in. I was like, this is going in, <laughs> yeah. and then it went in, and they were like, how'd you know? I'm like, because he's the best shooter and he's on fire. And then they were there for the final one where they were like, what? I'm like, yeah, what? I don't have an answer. That was absolutely just. It was chilling. It was unreal. And then the also the atmosphere, Dave. The people there. The interaction with like like Carmelo on the Amazing. sidelines, um, he, he's doing his go to sleep pose. Like looking at Draymond's there. Draymond's just there to intimidate Rudy Gobert. <laughs> I, Whoa. you know, Le, LeBron and KD probably were like, well, KD especially. Uh-huh. KD's had it done to him. Yes, had it help him, and yes. now getting getting. You know, to have it uh, be on his team again, I'm sure. I, I don't know, man. That guy, I, I watched it at some brewery up up in the wine country, and there was a lot of people there. Um, and when he hit the first one, I just started giggling. And I'm yeah. sitting at the bar, and I'm, like, talking to the bartender, and, you know, and I'm just, I just giggle. I'm like, hey, uh, you're going to want to watch the next three minutes. Like, because yeah. he just has that thing. When the first one, dro- like, when the first one drops and he's about to go in the flurry, He's just got the thing. The ball is just moving off of his fingers different when he's dribbling. Like he's just got like an extra pep in his step. And then by the time he hit the lat, I mean the whole place, everyone's standing up. It was uh, you know, I had I had five minutes of patriotism in me. I had, I had a lot of patriotism for that game. And I even had I even had years of resentment and dislike for certain players boil away. With 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 maybe my, my patriotism overcame Devin it, the Devin Booker thing. Well, let's he's have amazing. A, let's have a brief Devin Booker aside. Yeah. Um, Devin Booker was selfless in the entire tournament. He willingly took a low usage. I'm just going to pass the ball and rebound and defend and take some shots. And the thing that makes it, I think so much cooler or or adds to the coolness of the story is the fact the social media stuff where Kuzma was, was pointing out Kyle Kuzma tweeted a while ago, like team USA needs guys just to do the dirty work. Just, you know, who know the ball's not going to come to, I don't have the exact tweet pulled up, but saying, well, Kuzma was like, Hey, if you guys need a role player who can shoot threes, he's thinking about himself, right? That too. Yeah, Yeah. Yeah. But Kuzma saying Team USA is going to need a guy to be selfless and just do the dirty work and not need the ball. And Devin Booker, who I have a long running fake feud with, right. um, Devin Booker says, I'll do it. And he did it. He's amazing. And this version of Devin Booker, like this is going to be the most Bill Simmons sentence ever. But the whole like, I think, I think Devin Booker's Olympic experience it's going to really help the Suns. Not for KD. KD's said the same stuff. Not for anybody else. But Devin Booker, who the short story of why I turned on him years ago through podcasting, some of it was fantasy basketball related. I had him in a fantasy basketball keeper league, like for his early years in the NBA. And I'm like, I don't like watching this guy play. I don't <laughs> like his smirk. I don't like his, just something about his, like, you told me I can't say aura. Something about his, uh, <laughs> yeah. Just okay, but you can say it in this instance okay. when, when it's a proper use of the term. Also, something about like the way he would go through his the vibe. motions, the, his vibe, the seventy-point game, uh, all the stuff where it's like this team, me. his son's team lost so horrifically for so long, and I was like, he doesn't make winning plays. He makes beautiful jump shots. He makes beautiful moves. In my mind, he hasn't connected that to winning or trying hard. And again, there were some fantasy elements where I'm like, I I, I got sure. him off my, my fantasy basketball. Team. But still, that that and then I didn't like the Suns or whatever. But this, where you're like, we've already seen him lead the Suns to the finals. We saw him just be incredible the last several years, become probably the best shooting guard in the NBA. But this being like, I don't even need the ball. I can just do whatever's asked to me. I think that can have some real benefit because you look at his squad right now, like Bradley Beal could put the ball in the bucket and Grayson Allen could put the ball in the bucket. And of course, Devin Booker is just light years better than those two guys. But like they have guys who can put the ball in the bucket. They need the other things. And maybe Devin can bring some of that. Maybe not. Maybe that's a pure sports podcaster fantasy thing that learning to win in this way is what it is, man. Because he played winning basketball. Like also, 
man, I'm very happy to be wrong about a guy like that. Like, cause the things I was wrong about with him, he's proven to, to be like, he is a hooper. Uh, hooper. Like that guy is a gamer. Like, I mean, he's tough. He, he can guard. He, he really can pass. He can do everything. Yeah. Um, for all of the times that Kobe is invoked by the, that generation of players, especially in this run for him in the Olympics, I think Devin Booker is as close to that to, to Kobe in the mindset standpoint of any of these guys. Cause what Kobe did in the Olympics, like remember that 2012 team? Uh, I mean, he just, here's my job. And now he's the best player on the team half the time. You know what I mean? But here's my job. I'm going to do it. Defense. I'm going to pass. The ball's not going to stick. It was a different Kobe. It was kind of like Carmelo, right? Which is why it was cool that Carmelo was there. Cause you know, the team USA stuff was where he probably played his best team basketball uh, in his career. So, I mean, I love seeing Devin Booker like that. I, I mean, does that work in the NBA over the course of an 82 game season? Probably not. I'm not saying he has to disappear totally on offense. Yeah. I'm just saying, I think they have enough guys on that squad where if he can just adapt some of this, that like, I, I'm, it's weird how like, juiced I am on the Suns right now um, based on them uh, s- sneaking off with Tyus Jones. Yeah. And then just that, like, I always thought they just needed the the connective pieces. And if like, if Booker can just take some of that, I mean, he already had enough of it. And, you know, you would wish maybe some of the worst players on the Suns could do it. Like, I don't know. Y- y- your life is to serve Devin Booker. It's what every, you know, that's what every Suns player should be thinking. Yeah. Um, but I don't know. I was so impressed by Devin Booker. Uh, maybe it was the mix of patriotism and basketball coach fantasy where it's like, I just love what Devin Booker has done here. Um, but then the, he's a dog, but then the superstars, I mean, having LeBron play so well throughout the whole tournament, he was named the MVP of the men's basketball, uh, tournament for the Olympics. Um, KD who came through with the big clutch dagger against Serbia. I mean, even Joel Embiid was, he was great against Jokic and then he was really good in the, in the gold medal game. I mean, Anthony Davis, I don't feel like anyone's talking about Anthony Davis. He was spectacular in in, in the gold medal game. I mean, it's just, he's so good at defense. What's wild is France was still so close. Even with the Steph Curry explosion, then like, well, Batum had an answer. Like they, they kept having answers and they made that. It was still up until like the final, like 40 seconds or so. It, like it, it, the game had not been decided. Our guys really. weren't, our guys weren't, I would say fully serious. Uh, defensively, especially I, I, this wasn't our best defensive team. We weren't the best defensive team, in my opinion, in, in the tournament. I think that was France or Germany, but our offense is just so undeniable. And, and then we have Steph Curry and nobody else does. <laughs> Yeah, like imagine that, if Steph Curry could like was playing for Serbia. Well, that was just. I mean, I was I was thinking like uh, Desmond Bain needs a Serbian passport. <laughs> you know, like they just need yeah. one light up. John Morant actually would be very cool. They didn't. Need, they need again. It's guard play, you know. And this is why I'm actually kind of high on France because I think some of these wings have potential uh, with the ball in their hands, development wise. Um, I, it's all about like, can you get the ball to your best players? Serbia, th- their best player happens also not only be their point guard, he's also their center. So that makes it a little bit easier. But like you could see like Wemby had a really good offensive game in the gold medal game. Probably yeah. didn't even get enough touches, you know? Um, it just gets tough. But um, Bam and AD were so interesting to me when they got to play together defensively. Uh I don't know. I, I, I've already started thinking about 2028. And I do think that I, I hope at least that one of the things they prioritize is defense. Yeah, we need it. Um, with that 2028 roster, uh, Steve Kerr is going to be retiring um, from Olympic basketball. It sounds like um, I don't know who the if like if, does Spolstra want to take that over. There's one. The, there's one right answer. Yeah, that's what that's Sp- the guy we yeah. need. That's, um, we need Eric Spolstra. What did you think of Anthony Edwards in the gold medal game? Because it seemed like he stuck out to me. He stuck out like a sore thumb where it was like, he's not. It's like, that should be Derek White. I'm sorry. Like today it should be Derek White. Maybe they felt like they needed more of the offensive boost. He's been so good. Maybe mm-hmm. it's because he's the up and coming, maybe guy they're going to need in the next Olympics. They they had to get him this gold medal game experience. I mean, it's hard to make. Um, they made a big lineup change there. 
I yeah. think that that threw him off offensively. Well, Although Katie, I like, yeah, got put in the starting lineup. Katie yeah. goes in the starting lineup, and, and uh, you know, Ant had had really developed chemistry there, where they were kind of like thunder and lightning to a certain degree. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and I, I just think it's harder to do when you don't have KD as that other guy. Uh, but also, uh, you know, it seems like they told him just go out there and just try to be a bulldog defensively. I mean, what he did to Evan Fournier doesn't feel mm-hmm. very fair. Um, I'm <laughs> sure, like there's someone trying to, you know call the Hague on him but uh I don't know it was one bad game I think overall like he had a pretty good Olympics but the thing that sure. stood out to me oh, yeah. for Anthony Edwards he was dribbling the ball the air out of the ball too much and I hope that when when he comes back in 2028 and he's maybe the top dog because he's going to be like 26 that's something I would like to see him you know settle down on a little bit maybe take a little bit more of the Devin Booker approach now they're different players, of course, and you and Anthony Edwards, his ability to turn the corner and be strong with the ball going to the basket is going to be huge for us. But there are times where you got to let the game come to you, and I felt like he was pressing a little bit too much. What What are your thoughts on just the overall state of United States basketball? I mean, we talk all the time about the world catching up and that sort yeah. of thing, but the the idea for me that I think about is like, we had three of the all time greats, you know, with Steph, KD and LeBron. And even if LeBron is ancient, he was still so amazing. And we had those three guys playing well. Steph had a slow Olympics up until the point that it mattered, you right. know, and then, then he delivered at the highest stage, but it took incredible performances from those three guys to come back and barely beat Serbia. They were trailing by 13 going into the fourth quarter. They barely won that game. And then it was a three-point game, and it was still a four-point game in the final minute, even with Steph's explosion. So it took those all-time top 10, top 15 level players to, to eke out the gold medal. If those guys aren't around in 2028, doesn't it seem like it's going to be maybe a toss up in the Olympics going forward? I mean, I, I do think that it it's the world catching up is a tricky, right? Yeah. And I have a lot of experience here. Yeah. Um, it, it's not so much that they're catching up, but they are better. Mm-hmm. They don't have the talent pool we have. I mean, Serbia has t- less than 20 million people. Slovenia is like what? 12. Um, Latvia, you know, these countries are small. Now, if, right. they, they, if we were going against regions, which what that's what we are. I mean, we have 350 million people to, you know, potential right. talent pool, uh, or I guess half of that or whatever. Um, so catching up is just not going to happen. It's That's not a thing. What you need is, you know, more development of guards, obviously. Um, on the dribble stuff, like off the dribble stuff is where we're so much better than everyone else. But the, the ways in which the the rest of the world has passed us in my opinion is the team development stuff when you see these guys come over you see these guys like Jokic Victor Wembanyama like he knows how to play team basketball he's going to develop the individual skills that's going to make him more successful in the NBA but he has such a high floor because he can I mean if he doesn't pan out as one of the greatest players ever he's still going to be really really good because he knows what he you know how to play basketball. And so that's a little bit lost for us. I mean, I, I can get into the the capitalism uh ruining grassroots basketball. <laughs> I, like it's too much time one on one, too much time one on zero, not enough time in a team setting. But that being said, we have also just overwhelming talent. Being able to choose from this huge pool means we only take the best of the best. We don't, we don't, there is no, like Nando DiColo is really good. He was a really good player, a <laughs> little old. You yeah. know what I mean? Like they, they have to have Nando DiColo. Right. Um, and so we just, I don't know. It's a luxury to have all these people. So catching up, I think the gap is smaller just because basketball now is bigger and opportunities are, are, are just more uh, present. Mm-hmm. A lot of this is we see the talent that's elsewhere. And we didn't used to see it. I mean, unless you were trading VHS tapes back in the eighties, you didn't know like how good that the rest of the world was at basketball. So, I mean, it's just like, think about how many NBA people don't know the name Oscar Schmidt. Right. So it's, uh, it's, it's more about perception than it is reality. And I think that we'll, we'll always be ahead of everyone else, 
But it's telling that so many of the best individual players in the NBA are from outside of America. Yeah, it just seems like if I don't know who the next overseas guy who might hit at the same level of Giannis and Doncic and Jokic, but it's like if 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 ever one country got two of them, you know, <laughs> like like and then you had and yeah. then you could fill in that roster, or maybe it's Canada, you know, with Shea and then somebody else, and then if Canada is able to fill it, I mean, Canada very disappointing with their um, Olympics run, but like Canada is also not that big of a, I mean, they don't have that many people. I mean, they have a lot of people, but not that many. Um, I I don't know. I mean, I think France, obviously like Victor women, Yama looks like he's on pace to be the best player in the world. By the time we get to the next Olympics, Uh, Serbia, Jokic is the best player in the world. His game isn't predicated on athleticism. So Four years from now, maybe he's still, you know, um, at least t- uh, close to the top uh, of the heap. But it's going to be about these other guys. If Bilal Koulibaly turns into a player, if any of those French wings but can, even can do stuff off the dribble. Yeah, it's it's finding the French guy who could do stuff off the dribble. Yep. And it's like, I don't know who that's. Where's Tony Parker for them who can yeah. shoot? That's the other thing, right? Like, it's putting it all together. I mean, we have Steph Curry and they don't. So... Going back to Jokic, you know, being maybe the best player in the world. One of the things that was like that struck me about that loss for Serbia, and they they finished up with a nice win over Germany. I thought it was a little assisted by the referees, but like you know, Jokic played great in, in that uh, in the bronze medal game. Uh, that Abramovich guy did really well. Um, but if Jokic in Serbia had hung on against Team USA, which I know did not happen. But if it had, that would have been, in my mind, another kind of feather in the cap that would have gone, it would have heavily weighed on like the all-time basketball discussions. Like just Serbia beating Team USA in the Olympics, I feel like when people start discussing all-time great players, that would have maybe held the same weight as like an NBA title when you talk about Jokic. Like Jokic, all right. The Nuggets won the title, but also they beat. He led Serbia over Team USA. They had LeBron. Uh, it would have been on the resume. It would have been on the all-time resume, and all of a sudden it would have been like, "Whoa, uh, now where do we put Jokic?" Like I think it would have counted the same as an NBA title, but I, of course, just it did, beating them, it, even it, it if did they ha- didn't win the right. gold. That's how I feel. Because yeah. it would have been. It, it would have been. Having the That's NBA why we talk guys, about Luis Scola, the way we do this today. I mean, <laughs> sure. Uh, <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> Luis Scola, I talk about him for his handsomeness and how old he was, and he kept playing. He's that, still old and more jacked that, now. Apparently. That guy was like 46 and putting up 14 and 10 uh, <laughs> in those international competitions. No, like I, the the history aspect of it, and like some of this, like I don't even normally do this kind of discussion about all time stuff because like I didn't watch Kareem play. I saw yeah. him. I saw him break the scoring record when I was a child. It was on CBS or ABC. You know, like, I don't know. It was like, but I didn't really watch him. Even Michael Jordan. I didn't, there was no league pass. I didn't I've seen s- Kareem in forget Paris more times than I saw him watch a game. Then I watched right. him play live. So all time, all time player argument stuff. I already don't do much of it. Cause I, I feel like how could you possibly have an opinion about all these players who yeah. we haven't seen play the same number of times. Uh, and then it's like, I also don't like rings culture and I'm like, we're here to enjoy the sport. But I, I did get kind of carried away with the, if this one thing happened to Jokic, all of a sudden the, the big arguments are going to be, they're going to be totally changed. Even if it was like his supporting cast did really good in that game. Like Jokic could have played a lot better. If Jokic played to honestly, the standard that we expect from him, I think Serbia wins that game because all, all everyone else was hitting shots. It, it was right. the other guys making three pointers um, for Serbia. Also the flip side of this, like Embiid played great against Jokic. Uh, maybe he could have boxed out a little harder, but like he was good. Um, I saw some people like kind of some Sixers fans, like throwing a, uh, maybe parades too strong, but they were like celebrating 
Embiid playing well and Jokic losing. And I was just thinking, like, if that was me, if I was a Sixers fan, and I was, like, two plays away from Embiid being erased from the history books forever, like, that would have been a pulverizing blow to Joel Embiid's legacy. If he joins up Team USA and then Jokic is serving, like, I don't care. He could have had 30 and 20. If, like, losing that, I'm like, do you not understand, like... Hey, for for all this, you you say he had a good game. He almost gave that game away. Hey, he had some not turnovers. boxing out, uh, man. Like, and he did not I'm like s- boxing out. Yeah, I'm telling you right now, I'd like to volunteer to be the box out coach for Team USA going I- into the future. Just the guy who yells "box out, <laughs> rebound." Because I mean, it, it just it's infuriating. This is why we lost the World Cup. I mean, Ooh. it's not only the only reason why, but like it, it you have to cross your T's and dot your I's. If you want to uh, to win in these games, it's just not going to be a cakewalk. So um, Who, we were lucky the, there, Dave. Who's the best American boxer outer? I, I, I'm trying to think Brooke right now. Lopez. Who's the oh Brooke he's Lopez, very very far. good, very yeah. good at boxing out. Um, he's also very good at boxing in. Um, you know, which is just pushing guys under the basket. Uh, all of the Knicks, all of the Knicks, just as a group. Well, we had Josh Hart on the FIBA team. Yeah. But, you know, Josh Hart's a guy when you actually play him at the four, you lose that advantage because he's like right. he's the super plus for a for a three. Yeah. yeah we, we gotta we gotta find who are the who are the best um who are the best rebounders. Well, I mean, we're I'm hoping it's gonna be Cooper Flag. And oh, yeah, uh, yeah. you know, I, I'm hoping that we're not even some gonna other have guys to worry I haven't learned their, their names of yeah. yet. The, the um, nice thing about the next group of guys that are coming, all these big they're all high motor. I mean, Derek Lively, the second probably should be on our 20, 2018. team. Like we should probably already be thinking well, that way. He's a guy we've had those guys. I mean, we've had JaVale McGee and DeAndre mm-hmm. Jordan, both in there that, yep. you know, they have Olympic success and experience. Yeah. You know, maybe one of those guys, it's funny because of the NBA game where big men are now taught. Let's let's shot block and also shoot threes. And yeah, Maybe if you could pick up a handle or any, anything else you can add offensively, that really helps your package where we don't have as many guys where it's like, hey, man, your shoulders, you're kind of brawny. Why don't you just uh, uh, go be box, big, go, go box out everybody. And Paolo, maybe- Paolo Bencaro, like I want I want him to just box out slash and, and maybe do some playmaking here and there on the side. And he's going to be amazing. I mean, if Jason Tatum would do this stuff, right? If Jason Tatum, I don't tried think to be. I don't think Jason Tatum is drinking the same Devin Booker Kool-Aid. He's not. He is no. disrespected and not happy and maybe not going to play. Got to get into that bag. Got to get into that bag, Keith. Uh, Jason Tatum missed every jumper he took in the Olympics. That's not ideal. Um. Anyways, uh, let's let's talk about Gershon Yebiseli, who played really well. For, needs a job out here. He's look, he's maybe looking for a job. He apparently he has a buyout, but it's expensive. I mean, a two point yeah. five million dollar buyout. I don't see any NBA team thinking he would still be that much of a difference maker that it would be worth he's, the buyout. He, but what do you think? I think look, what happens with a lot of these guys. He's making more money than he would make here. Um, by the time you consider uh, taxes and well, he's going to be on a minimum and now, and then he's also got to live in the States, which quality of life is less. He's got to travel more, more games, more BS. If I were him, I'd be trying to stay, but I, I get it because if he can come over and, and in his head, maybe he's thinking one year on a minimum and then I can sign a deal. So the reality is though, like it's hard to break out once you sign a minimum. This is why Russ was trying to avoid it so much. There are a lot of guys that could be NBA players, but the money's better. I think I think Yabaselli is trying to do the uh, the Dan Hurley thing with the Lakers, right? He's trying to get is it Real Madrid? He's get try- a raise, yeah. He's trying he's trying to get a raise off of this. Like and like you said, the money and the taxes thing. I mean, don't don't a lot of the European stars they get paid tax free. Somehow well, the club, the can, club pays so the, the club taxes. Pays taxes. This is oh, like okay. Nikola Mir- Miritic when he left the NBA he turned down, like, I don't know. It was like three years, 15 million a year or something. Right. And people were like, wow. So I did some digging and found out, I was like, okay, well he's making eight or nine or something like that. But you know, the team buys you a house. Yeah. They, Here, they, here's <laughs> a, here's a nice new car. 
Um, here is a food stipend. We're paying your taxes. Uh, yeah. Your kids are paid to go to like, you're going to go to this private school for free. So like there is no CBA like that. I mean, they, they kind of have one, but there's nothing to stop you from getting gifts. Um, it, sort of loosely, there are rules about how teams can and are allowed to spend money. But as we know, a lot of sports throughout the world is just used for money laundering anyway. So <laughs> right, uh, right. they're very creative. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And so, I mean, and also Madrid. Uh, yeah, nice place. Well, I mean, you know, who's but, got cap Dave, space right now for Gershon Yubaselli? Yub like, but is he going to go to Utah? Does he get free league pass? That's the important part. Is it part of the CBA over there? As um, long as he doesn't sign a two-way, right? No. Uh, I mean, I was thinking, of course, I'm a Grizzlies man. When I still feel like we need big bodies. A, 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 a Yeba Sale, Jared Jackson Jr. front court. That seems pretty nice. Like, we need a bruiser. I mean, Zach Eady has been drafted to be the bruiser alongside uh, Jaron, but we could use another one. I feel like a Yeba Sele, uh in there. The, the Grizzlies have a roster spot. If they, you know, they got a guy they can cut, and uh, Diakite, who they picked up in a trade this summer. Um, I thought it'd be a good find, but also, yeah, I don't think um, they're not going into the tax for him. They're not paying a $2.5 million buyout. Yeah, maybe you have a silly. He had a, he had a good summer. Uh, maybe he gets a raise to go back. Now, the funny, if we're talking about guys getting jobs overseas, I don't know if you saw this, but uh, Poku signed with Partizan. Oh. So we could potentially have Bruno Caboclo and uh, Alexei Pokashevsky as, as the uh, the front court in Partizan. That is exciting. Now, Bruno Caboclo left the team last year um, just – on his own and uh but they're they're expected to bring him back that's gonna be fun i would love to see both caboclo and uh and yabasele maybe get other opportunities in the nba but maybe it's not caboclo would be such an interesting five for you know somebody yeah Mm -hmm. um anyways uh let's actually answer a couple of listener submitted questions we have some questions in regards to the olympics uh these are or this is the croissant Question on. Any questions? Um, yes. All right, Caleb um, McNeese asks: Is LeBron still playing and on the national team for 2028? Well, uh, if he also adds, if retired, will LeBron try to come out of retirement for the 2028 Olympics? Okay. Modern science is. Uh, it, it, we can do some things, right? This guy is going to keep playing. I think, what if we got a LeBron James 2027, 2028 NBA season retirement tour that culminated in a gold medal game in Los Angeles at the Ad Olympics, and, and then he hangs him up, leaves his shoes on the court. Um, I think that if, it, like, if I'm the one writing the story, mm-hmm. that's how I try to have it play out. Uh, that's a long time from now. He's going to turn 40 in December. Uh, you, you never know. It would be fun. I think if he retires, I don't think he'll come back. Oh, so, okay. I, I don't think, think he would, because like, I do think that this stuff is special to these guys. And I think that he would respect and appreciate that. Maybe it's somebody else's turn, but maybe not. Maybe I'm projecting. I don't think he's going to still be playing. And I think the 2027, 2028 season, that's, that feels like too far, but maybe not. But also, I don't know how much, how much does he care about? I mean, he might be able to build an insurmountable league lead in the all time scoring numbers, you know, like just keep piling those points up and maybe he won't care that his career numbers will start dipping. If he goes into this, like he's now scoring 15 or 17 a game or something. Um, my guess would be LeBron plays two more seasons. I think that maybe three pushing that to four feels wild to me. Um, you talked about modern science. Okay. Maybe modern medicine can do it, but I do feel like with the games being in LA, I could totally see him retiring after the 26, 27 season. And then just being like, Oh, are there qualifiers? I'll play in qualifiers. I don't need to do anything else. This could, I I will just be international ball. Um, uh, LeBron and the kids. He'll be America. Luis Scola. That, now that I'm into that. 
He'll just be now, power, here's the one power problem forward, power team. ball LeBron. Yeah, what is it? Got one problem. If LeBron James is retired. Yeah. 2028 Olympics. Yep. And I pull off the coup that I want <laughs> to, to attempt on U.S. Olympic handball. Yeah. LeBron yeah, yeah. James is my captain. He's your number one. That's it. I'm making the call today. Like right you, now. You know. Putting it out there. LeBron. Brandon, Brandon Wright, former NBA player, might be too old, but I, I mentioned this to him on an episode either four or eight years ago during one Olympics about, hey, you seem like you'd be amazing at handball because you're athletic and you're huge. And he was like, yeah, I'd try it. So maybe there's other Maybe Derek Lively could be your handball guy. Maybe if he doesn't make Team USA basketball, he could be What about your, Steph? He'll also no. be old. Nah, too much, too many turnovers. You gotta, you gotta. You yeah, gotta, you can't have that. Can't have that. You gotta, you gotta possess that that ball. You gotta maintain possession. Um, Bobby Payton asks, if you were Adam Silver, what changes do you make to the NBA this season based on the things that you liked about Olympics basketball? <laughs> uh, hmm. And I just get to be a dictator here. Yeah, uh, I do think game flow. It matters so much. One of the reasons why everyone enjoys like the World Cup last year and the Olympics this year is because the games move. You, you know, we don't it's not all the TV timeout stoppages. Uh, you can't call live ball timeout. So you only get the timeout on a on a out of bounds or a, a play stoppage. Mm -hmm. That's way better. Uh, I not the playing it off the rim thing. The NBA is too athletic. It's an ab the NBA is an above the rim basketball league, so you can't have this. If guys are going to get hurt. It would just be miserable to watch, actually. Uh, but the biggest thing is just game flow, timeouts, quit stopping the game. I would say go to forty minutes. Uh, you know, just make it no you know, respect my time a little bit more. Uh, get get me to the important meat of the game faster. Uh, but that's the biggest one, man. It's just game flow. I, I think a lot of the changes that they've made have been huge improvements. We we get a closer whistle to this feeble whistle now, it, it, as long as those changes stay. I like the physicality, uh, especially out, you know, in the in the middle of the court where where guys are allowed to put a hand on a guy. You can't just get beat um, because you're not allowed to touch someone. So it's all game flow stuff. Just have the refs swallow the whistles yeah. and quit calling timeouts. The well, I mean. How many timeouts do they get? Is it just like three a game or something? It's five. It five a game? Okay. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, the the fewer timeouts is is makes it a better viewing experience. What do you feel about the inability to advance the basketball on a timeout? Do you still want to keep that so, from the NBA game? I would. I think that's better. Because right? th that is pure entertainment. That's pure. And it's to make also... But it's also strategy because it's available to both teams. This is the thing. Like, yeah. I, that is a move where... I, Sports are about drama. Mm -hmm. This is one move, and, and teams mess this up all the time, right? They run out of that timeout. They don't have it. Advancing the basketball is just a better – it's just better for the sport, uh, mm -hmm. better to watch on TV. I wouldn't I, – I don't care so much that FIBA doesn't have it. I mean, I've coached under that, and it, it's it, it doesn't really hurt you. Mm -hmm. You know, if you plan ahead, you got to be thinking ahead. you got to have full court plays. Uh, but having a, having sideline out of bound, you know, being able to have a sideline out of bounds opportunity for a last second shot, I, I think is just, you can't do it. You can't do it any other way for television. Um, another game flow thing that they use in international basketball is they play advantage on shot clock violations. Yeah. And most, I feel like most people have been asking for that. I mean, I asked Marty McCutcheon about the that, like on an episode and he's like, we don't have any interest in doing that because anytime you're judging advantage, that's not a black and white thing anymore. Monty's opinion at that point, maybe he was just being a company man and supporting the, the rules committee was they wanted black and white. If it's a shot yes. clock violation, shot clock violation, violation. Well, the reason they but, want it but, black and white, but this game they want flows, all the rules black and white I know, so they can but it's not, break them. Yeah, but like it's so much better being able to play advantage that keeps the game moving. And like the lack of the live ball timeout, it's great. And f for me, it's just all about the 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 foul baiting, foul drawing is frowned upon and it, it does not get rewarded nearly as much in FIBA basketball, but yeah. Uh, the, and the take, the, the take foul, um, you know, the, if you're going for the ball in the half court, like I, I don't mind the way that it's officiated uh, in FIBA, but I, I think the NBA kind of solved that problem this year. Yep. 
Well, anyways, thanks you guys for the questions. If you want your question to be answered on air or as part of the monthly bonus episode, you have to be a Patreon supporter. Do that at patreon.com slash fast break breakfast. Also, if you want to play fantasy football with me and other listeners, our draft is going to be Thursday, August 29th. We will play over on Sleeper. But to do that, you got to be a Patreon supporter at the $5 a month tier. Also, if you join that tier, you can join the Slack channel. We have all kinds of Slack channels. We got a movies channel, a politics channel. We got the main feed. We got a Grizzlies channel. We got a Timberwolves channel. We got all kinds of stuff in there. Uh, we have a health channel. I've never been in there. Um, but anyways, uh, if you want to support the show, you want to play fantasy football, you get access to a bonus content, you want uh, to join the Slack, do it all. Patreon.com slash fast break breakfast. All right, Dave, no awards segment of the program today, but I am debuting a new segment about Ice Cube's The Big Three. Uh, I went to The Big Three event in Nashville on Sunday. Dave, have you followed The Big Three at all? I mean, I know it exists, and I know a lot of old players uh, yeah. Yeah, have yeah. found success there, and I um, know that um, they did a fake $5 million offer to Caitlin Clark, which is brilliant. Did they? You, you're saying because they knew it would be denied? So the yeah, big three. Yeah, but if, if, you, if you pull it off, it's great. I don't know if it was fake or not. I think they were honest. They wanted to do it. The big three, they're successful. And I don't know how they're successful, honestly. I assume no one watches them, but I don't know. I went to this event. It was the playoffs. They've never come to Nashville before. There were a lot of people there. Like, it was a well-attended live event, which I'm like, that's that's hard to pull off. Like, I don't know how they did it. Um, they made the, the offer to Caitlin Clark to play. Um, they made this offer to the men's three-on-three -three gold medalists from the Netherlands. They said, hey, come play our teams and or come play our champion. And the winner gets 150 grand, and, and we'll, we'll pay all expenses paid your trip over here. And the Netherlands team accepted the challenge, but FIBA... Said they could. They said the, the the Netherlands team would be forbidden from all competitions if they did it. So FIBA uh, stopped because it because FIBA, FIBA can't make money off of it, Keith. I know they don't want to be humiliated by uh, Jason Richardson. Um, no, I, I did go to this event, so I got I got credentialed to go. Okay. I saw us in Nashville. I'm like, I, I want to get me the credentials. Let's see how that happens. The The big drawback was I, I got, they gave me my approval on Friday night, like before a Sunday. I'm We're talking less than 36 hours before the event. They're like, you've been approved for your credential. Like, okay, cool. I'll go. And I wrote back. I was like, yeah, is there media parking? And they never wrote back. They're like, they're like, reply if you have any questions. I said, I do have a question. Is, is, is there media parking? They didn't write back. So I show up for the game. The parking is 40 bucks. And I'm like, hey, I'm here with media. Is there a media lot? And they're like, they're like, they, they looked at a, at a list. They're like, you're not on the list. So then I like pulled over and like I called the person, no answer. Someone came out from the media. I'm like, is there any parking? They're like, no. I'm like, oh, okay. And I was like, I might just go home. Uh, I was like, I don't know. I, it was, it's like eight minutes from my house to get, get in downtown Nashville very quick for me. Um, my wife was like, no, no, just, just do it. Whatever. Who cares? I did end up parking. There's like secret street parking in Nashville yeah. where it's like $3 an hour. Um, maximum two hours though. So I did. All right. I'm in for two hours. Um, I went in, uh, and there was like me and a guy from uh, another guy from a local paper. And I found somebody else from a paper that was from Corey Brewer's hometown. So Corey Brewer played for the bivouac. One of my right. favorite team names. Corey Brewer, of course, he of the 50 point game in the NBA, multiple time national champion at Florida. He's from Portland, Tennessee. The Portland, Tennessee paper was there trying to get quotes. But anyways, That's I was wondering these, these media people. I'm like, Hey, is there any, are there seats? They're like, I don't, I don't know. Turns out there were no media seats. They just let us sit on the floor where the photographers go. Like, not actual seats, literally sitting crisscross applesauce on the floor uh, right under the basket. So I got a good view. It was fun. Again, it was so entertaining. I'm, I, I'm, I'm, I'm in awe. Look at the ticket prices. 25 bucks. It go. hasn't, they haven't sold out to the corporate entities yet. Yep. Still affordable. You could take your kids. You could probably spend less money going to see a big three game than you would at the movies. Wow. That's aggressive. I don't 
25 a, bucks a ticket. It's not bad, man. That's not, good. It's not, it's not you're terrible. you NBA star, like NBA players. And, and it's long. Old. Like it's several hours and they have like it's a bunch of games, entertainers right? it's, and it's do, like, so yeah. this one was only two games, but like the games were kind of, kind of lengthy. I didn't That's get to cool. see much of the second one because I had to go move my car. And I'm like, I'm going home. <laughs> That's cool. I would have stuck around longer. But like I saw like Clyde Drexler was there. I mean, Julius Irving and Gary Payton were the coaches. Jerry Stackhouse, um, Nashville legend, fast break breakfast legend, and now uh, assistant coach for the Warriors. He was there sitting beside Ice Cube. So it was a delightful experience. Uh, congratulations on uh, on the success, Ice Cube. Uh, that championship <laughs> game is this Sunday. I might tune in. Um now Anyways. we need, hey, if Tracy McGrady's one-on-one league had caught on, then... Why can't Tracy McGrady show up, man? He should be... play? Uh, if he, big three, FIBA three-on-three. Maybe when LeBron retires, he'll have enough time to do the three-on-three three, uh, qualifiers. No. Apparently He's that's too busy why. with handball. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> All right, Dave. Well, I think we did it. Um, Thanks, uh, as always, for coming on. It's always fun talking basketball with you. Uh, listeners out there, if you want to support the show, you want to play fantasy football, you want to get bonus content, do all of that at patreon.com slash fastbreakbreakfast. All right, you guys are the best. Thanks for listening. And remember, breakfast is the most important thing. Yeah, never apologize for being G&G. Fast break break, man. You understand?